I want to get to um, to talking about because you're talking about things that get disallowed on tax returns, making sure we kind of cover that. So let's kind of go into that. Like, what are some things that people need to be thinking about in that regard? So the biggest thing and, and what I, I have a course that I teach, like the basics for people who are coming into this. But one of those levels is audit domination. And the reason why is because you can deduct whatever the crap you want to on your return and it doesn't matter until you get audited. Right. So you can say whatever you want to. And when it gets audited, that's where the where the real things come into play. So right. um, the reason the biggest reasons why things get uh, taken away in an audit is because you don't have the documentation. And a lot of times people are like, well, what documentation do you need? First of all, for travel, you always have to have documentation. It is one of the, it is one of three places that the IRS is like, you got to have documentation and that's going to be travel, um, mileage and meals. Okay. So meals, you have to have the receipt, what you talked about. And then obviously the date and, and amount will be on there. Um, on, travel you've got to keep all of your receipts and, and a log of where you went and on um mileage you have to have some kind of log and those are the three things that you have to must 100 have receipts on everything else um you can base on the cohen rule if you know what it was i i like to keep receipts for everything but uh if if i'm going through your books and you've got you know say $5,000 in Walmart here, I'm going to question that. And if you don't know exactly what you bought, then I'm going to be like, hey, this is disallowed because you don't even know what you bought. So the biggest thing is keeping records of everything. Um, not putting everything on. Most of you have accountants that see you once a year. And y'all take what they say to the freaking bank. I have seen terrible returns come from CPAs. I've seen things like, a whole vehicle that didn't belong to you being written off. And you're like, well, I didn't know that. The IRS doesn't care. You didn't know you signed that darn return and you act like you're oblivious to everything that's on it. Um, you're not. And your job is to review that return. And if you see something on there that is is crazy, you need to ask what this is. Like, you know, you didn't own this red Silverado that's obviously on the return you signed. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't even look at that when I sign it. Well, Let's, I don't, I don't want to sign something. It's kind of like a bank agreement. I wouldn't want to sign something until I reviewed it. If it meant I could go to jail for it. And there, and there are actually times where, you know, I would, I would uh, audit something and it'd be like, I don't have that business. And, and maybe it was the accountant got confused for really most of the time. It's because um, the accountant didn't want you to owe taxes because they knew you were very price sensitive on how much tax you were going to owe. And so they would just make up crap and put it on the return. And you think that doesn't happen. It happens every freaking day. Wow. And whenever the IRS finds an accountant that does that, they all go on all the returns that accountant did. So don't play that dumb card. I didn't know. Open that darn return up and look through it. And a lot of people get anxiety and they're like, I don't know what these numbers mean. Guys, if you'll look through the return, you know what it means. It says wages. You know if your wages are about accurate. It says gross receipts. If your gross receipt says 100K and you made 200 million, you know that's a problem. But all the time I see it, like I, I was helping a guy the other day and he was like, he was like, well, I made this much. And I was like, your return doesn't show that. And he was like, well, I had this business. I was like, your return doesn't show that. They kind of have like one little piece and you have like 20 other businesses. It, it, it was, it was like, did you even look at this? Really? No, we just trusted them. Don't be trusting people with things that can send you to jail. Like that's, that's ludicrous. Um, secondly, the biggest reason you're getting audited is because your income's not matching up. Quit trying to hide your income. They got, you can find so many deductions that will totally obliviate that income, if you would just do show your income and focus on tax strategies and focus on expenses, a lot of entrepreneurs will think, oh, well, I'll just I'll just not report this. And what happens is they get away with it. And then they're like, ah, I'm not going to report this. And then and then eventually the government, I did an audit of, of a restaurant and he was like, well, I got away with it for so long and I just kept doing it. And like our first call, I called him and he was like, I was talking to him, you know, because I'm real personable and, and people just open up. And it, that's another thing. Do not talk to your IRS agent on your own. Like that's terrible, terrible idea. Get someone to represent you. Mm. You don't need to tell them more than, than you should. But the first call, he was like, I, I got to be honest. Like, and, and this is why he didn't go to jail. 
my, I've got two sets of books. What's on my return is not correct. And I'm like, you got two sets of books. He's like, yeah, because I don't report all of this side of my income. And I'm like, he's like, and I've already hired an attorney. (laughs) 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 It's like, I know I'm going to jail, but you know, he didn't go to jail because he was honest when we came up, you know, I, because I have a heart and I was like, I'm going to stick it to this guy because he was honest. Mm -hmm. Um, but you as an entrepreneur will Mm -hmm. never get ahead by not reporting your income. And secondly, you'll never get ahead by not knowing your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, how can you grow a business? And, And I say this because I have fallen into the same trap. Like I do everybody else's accounting and sometimes mine gets lax and I'm like, Oh, and and last summer. And when I say accounting, like, I mean like in depth numbers, like I like the calculations and stuff. Well, last summer I did a, um, a a cost per client on, on myself and and on my clients. And I was like, Holy crap. I was like paying like $4,000 out of pocket to have some clients that paid me like 300 bucks. (laughs) And, And it was like, so eye opening, right? So we raised our prices and now we don't lose money, but we, we're losing so much money on things that, that we didn't even know because we we were doing our, our books, but we didn't know it per client. And so um, I will say like having a CFO there and having someone else there to help you run the financial arm of your business is super important. And then also you being involved, uh, like you said, you got to know some tax law. You don't have to know it all. Like you don't, you need to be aware, right? Yeah. But you also don't need to be um, act like you don't know what's going on. I always say in business, I always figure it, we'll study whatever I'm going to outsource. So I'm not going to hire you to do a podcast until I know a little bit about podcasting myself because I need to know that you're even doing it, right? Like right. if I have no clue what I'm hiring you to do, how can I even know if it's a good value? And so I learn a little bit about everything. Um, but, but then I was talking to a guy today and he's like, you know, I am pretty much a CPA, but not, not with, with the degree. And I'm like, why you're an entrepreneur and you own four businesses and you have all this other stuff. He's like, cause I can't find anyone that will do all of this. And I was like, dude, if you would just hire someone like your businesses would be through the roof, but you don't even have time to look at the business because you're so focused on the accounting. So I say it in saying like, hire a team to help you, but know a little bit about what you're getting into. 